Francia Starossa wins his libel case and is awarded £300,000 damages. Israel buries its dead as its security forces raid Palestinian villages. Agency says tax take needed to service the national debt will continue to fall. And in Kinkosla, Daniel invites his fans for tea. Good evening. After four years, seven months and 18 days, Pruncius de Rossa has won his libel case against independent newspapers. A jury in the High Court took less than two hours this afternoon to find in his favour and award him damages of £300,000. The question of costs will be decided on the first day of the new legal term, October 6th. The managing director of independent newspapers, David Palmer, said the case had profound implications for the practice of journalism here. Mr. De Rossa said the case wasn't an attack on press freedom. This was the largest libel award ever given out by an Irish court, and it went to the longest-running libel case in the history of the state. After three trials and a total of 33 days in court, it took this jury just under two hours to come back with a conclusive verdict. And this time it was unanimously in Mr. de Ross's favour. The jury was asked two questions, both relating to the interpretation of an article written by Eamon Dunphy in the Sunday Independent in December 1992. The first question was, did the words complained of mean the plaintiff was involved in or tolerated serious crime? The jury answered yes. The second question asked, did the words mean that he supported anti-Semitism and or violent communist oppression? The jury again answered, yes. The jury awarded Mr. de Rossa £300,000 in damages. For the former minister, it was the end of a very long road. It has taken me four years, seven months and 18 days to get to this point through three court cases. I was determined that um, justice and rightness was on my side uh, and I was, I was quite certain at the end of the day that a jury of 12 of my fellow citizens would come to that conclusion and, and I'm happy that they did. The Democratic left leader went on to say that this was not an attack on the freedom of the press. I want to make it absolutely clear that this is a case about my reputation as a citizen of this country. It's not about press freedom. It's not an attack on press freedom as the independents sought to portray it. But that was not a view shared by independent newspapers. The verdict has profound implications for journalism in Ireland. We shall consider our position over the coming days. Costs for this case have still to be decided, but at present the legal bill for the last two trials stands at around three quarters of a million pounds. Independent Newspapers has already paid out £400,000 for the first trial, which was aborted after an article in one of their newspapers. I want to express my gratitude to Independent Newspapers for their support through this difficult trial and for supporting my journalism. I should also like to express my profound gratitude to Independent Newspapers' legal team throughout this case. But for Eamon Dunphy, this case is not quite over yet. Remarks that he made in his radio programme on Tuesday night were heard by Mr Justice Carney, who was concerned that they might have caused a mistrial in this case. Mr Dunphy has been ordered to appear in court on Tuesday morning on a question of contempt of court. This was the third time the Pruncia Starossa Independent Newspapers case had come to trial. It first came before the High Court in November of last year but was dismissed due to media coverage. A second trial in March of this year was inconclusive. The jury failed to reach a unanimous verdict. It was a case of third time lucky for Pruncia Starossa in his legal saga with independent newspapers. The case first came to trial in November of last year when Mr. Starossa spent five consecutive days in the witness box. He was denying claims made in the article that he said associated him with activities such as anti-Semitism and a tolerance of violent communist crime. But the case was thrown out by Mr Justice Brian McCracken, who said a weekend newspaper article published during the trial could have influenced the jury. The jury was dismissed and a retrial was set for early in the new year. Take two and the case opened again in the High Court in March of the this year. This time the trial lasted for 14 days, with Eamon Dunphy giving evidence to a packed courtroom.
But the outcome was again inconclusive when the jury failed after nine hours of deliberation to reach a unanimous verdict. Four months on and the third and final trial opened 11 days ago. But today the verdict was unanimous in favour of Mr. Duroc.